Adonis utilizes the Edge template engine for its view render. This is going to allow us to dynamically inject server-side data into our HTML for our users to see. Now, since we selected web application whenever we created our project, Edge is already set up and ready to go for us. However, it's worth noting that if you're using a pre-existing project, you can add Edge to it at a later point in time and the Adonis documentation goes over how to do that. So to get started, we can create new views two different ways. So we can either manually create the new views or we can use the ACLI to create the views for us. By default, all of our views should reside within the resources views directory. So if you're manually creating your views, manually create them here. And then also note that you wanna use the .edge extension. If you're using the ACLI to create your views, you'll wanna head into your terminal, go into your project, and then run node ace make view, and then whatever you want the view name to be. So let's do project to create an index view for all of our projects. And this will be created for us within the resources views directory as the file name .edge. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And you'll see we get an empty file here. So Edge can be treated the same as HTML. So all HTML5 syntax is valid Edge. So there's really nothing new to learn here. So to start out with, we can start this new page here by just doing an HTML5 boilerplate. I'm gonna use Emmet to quickly stub that out. Uh, we'll replace our title here with projects. And let's just give it a simple H1 of projects as well, just so that we have something to look at whenever we test it out. Okay, so we already have a projects controller, so we can render this out using our projects controller. And then since this is going to be the home page for our projects that lists out all of our projects, we'll use the index method for this. So we already have our projects query here pulling all of our project data. Uh, so we'll want to replace our response here with view. So we'll inject view from our HTTP context contract. Again, replace response here with view and then replace .json with dot, oops, dot render. And then the first argument to the render function is the template that we want to render out. So render will automatically look for the template name that we provide it within our resources views directory. So here, all that we need to do is provide project. So project there, give this a save, and we're good to go. So in an earlier lesson, we actually created a route for this. So if we enter our routes.ts file here, you'll see we have a resource routes defined for our projects within our projects controller. So this will automatically handle our index routing for us. So this will be available at slash projects. So we can head back into our terminal, start our server up, node ace, serve, hyphen, hyphen, watch, if you wanna watch for changes, jump into our browser and head to localhost 3333 slash projects. And we should see our boilerplate H1. And there's no other styling going on here. This is just a bare bones HTML document with a basic H1 in it because all that's being rendered out is all the content defined within our project.edge file, which is just this very simple HTML document. Okay, so next we can inject some data into this HTML document from our projects controller index method so we can make use of this project data that we have available to us here. And the way that we pass this along to our project.edge file is by the second argument of our render function. And this takes an object. The key name is whatever we want to access the data via from our view. And then the value is whatever the value of that key name should be. So in this case, we can just do a key name and value of projects. Go ahead and save this. And now projects will be available to us within our project.edge file. So within here, we can, let's just do parentheses here. And then let's say that we want to inject the number of projects that we have within our projects table within these parentheses. So very similar to Vue.js here, you could just make use of double curly braces. And now we have access to all of the data that we're providing in this view from our project controller index method, which is projects. So here we can do projects.length to render out the number of projects that we have from our projects query. So we can give this a save, jump back into our browser, give it a refresh, and we should see projects, parentheses, and within the parentheses, the number of projects that we have within our database. In this case, I have two. Okay, and then while we're talking about curly braces, I also wanna note that whenever you're using double curly braces, as we are here, the content being injected is going to be escaped to help prevent XSS attacks. If you happen to need to render out trusted raw HTML, you can do so by adding a third curly brace, just like so. So let's replace this project.length here with some HTML. Let's just do a string here. We'll do a span with a style color red, just to make it obvious. Uh, and then let's inject our project.length within the span and then just end the span off, give that a save, jump back into our browser, refresh, and we should see the same thing, except now we have this span telling our number to be red, which it is. And then to demonstrate this further, if we were to get rid of this third curly brace, give this a save, jump back into it and refresh, you'll see that now we're just rendering out the HTML 
as if it were a string. Additionally, if you happen to want Edge to completely ignore these curly braces, say maybe you're trying to render out some view data instead of Edge data, you can do so by prefixing your curly braces with an at symbol. And now Edge will completely ignore whatever is within the curly braces. You can actually see that our span tag went back to just normal HTML styling here whenever I added that at symbol on it. So you can see now it's rendered as a string. There it's rendered as HTML with the blue span matching everything else within my HTML document. So we can give this a save, jump back into our browser refresh, and you'll see exactly that. So now we get our double curly braces with the span rendered out because it's valid HTML, uh, but the contents of the span are being plopped on the page just as a normal string. So that's how you can tell Edge to ignore the curly braces so that something like view can make use of the curly braces instead. Okay, and then one more thing with curly braces here. So comments are double curly braces, double hyphens. Uh, so this is how you could approach a server side comment via edge. So I'm a server side comment. Okay, and then I also wanna note that HTML comments are perfectly valid as well. I'm a client side comment. The main difference here is that HTML comments will be included with the final HTML file sent to the user whereas the edge comments will not be since they are server side. So if we give this a save, jump back into our browser, refresh, you'll see within our inspector here, we have our HTML comment, but our edge comment is not there because it was not sent with this payload. Okay, so next up, let's move into conditionals. So let's start out with an if statement. So to do an if statement, you wanna prefix it with an at, and then just do your normal old if statement. So if, and then let's do projects.length, and there we go. So now the way that we would want to determine how to end this if statement, instead of doing curly braces here, we would want to do another at and then end if, and note that there's no space in between the end and the if. So with this, we have a fully valid edge if statement. So anything within this if and end if block will be rendered if we happen to have projects outline. So if this is truthy, what's inside of the if and end if will be rendered out. So here we could do uh, something like a P. So you have some projects. And then we could also do an else as well. So just do an at and an else to add an else to your if statement. And then within here, you could do you have no projects. So if we have projects, this will be rendered out. Otherwise, this will be rendered out. And then additionally, you can also do an else if. So at else if, again, note that there is no space there, your parentheses. And then let's do projects.length is greater than 100. Uh, and then let's do a P you have a lot of projects. Okay, so there we go. We have our if, else if, else, and and if. So we can test it out in the browser, see what we get, and we have some projects. Edge also comes with an unless statement, which allows us to do basically a negative if statement. So if we get rid of our else if and else, and let's say that we wanted to do at unless projects.length, and then to end this, we would do end, unless, and then within here, we would do a href, uh, let's just do a pound sign for right now, add a project to get started, and our anchor statement. So now unless projects has a length, this will be rendered out. So if projects doesn't have a length, if we don't have any projects, this will be rendered out. If it does have a length, if we do have some projects, this will be ignored. So we can give it a save, and we should not see anything since we do have some projects, and exactly we do not see anything. So there we go. And then lastly here for our conditionals, I also just want to note that ternaries are perfectly valid. So let's replace our H1 here with a ternary. So projects.length your projects because we have some projects. Otherwise, you need a project and give that a save as well. Okay, so finally, let's talk about loops. Let's actually render out some of our project data other than whether or not we have or have not projects. So since our loop will automatically check whether or not we have any projects for us, we can get rid of our if statement. And then to do a loop, you would do at and then each. And then the first item within our loop is the loop item itself. So this will be a single project. And then we would do in projects, which is our array of projects. And then just like all of our other tags to end our loop, we would do end each. And now within our each and end each, we have access to our individual project within our loop. So now we can just do, let's do an H3 and then curly braces project. And then since our projects have a name, let's just do project.name for now. End our H3, give that a save, jump back into the browser, give it a refresh. And now you see we have your projects because we have some projects from our ternary. 
And then we have project one and project two, which just happen to be the names of both of the projects that I have within my database. If you happen to need the index from this loop, you can do that as well. So just wrap your singular project item within parentheses. And then the second parameter of your parentheses is going to be the index. So here we can prefix our name with the index, put a hyphen in between, give that a save. And now we should see zero, project one, one, project two. Lastly here, we can actually simplify this up a little bit. We can get rid of our unless because each also supports else. So let's first put this in here just so that it makes a little bit more sense. So we'll have an else. So essentially this will act like an if statement. So if each can render anything out, so if we have any projects within our array, uh, it will skip over the else completely. Otherwise, if we don't have any projects, if there is nothing to loop over, our else will be rendered out. So here we can get rid of our unless statement. Let's just copy our anchor tag here and move it up within our else. And there we go. So give that a save and that's perfectly valid as well. We get that set out by refreshing. Okay, and then lastly here, I just wanna make a note that you can loop over objects with an edge as well. Uh, this also uses the each tag. Uh, and then the first item of our parentheses is going to be another set of parentheses. And this will be given both the value and the key of the currently looped item within the object. So, and then this will be in, and then let's just do an object here just so that we have something here. So example one, and let's do another two. And then we end this the exact same way, end each. And so we can do a paragraph here with our key, do colon and value, and let's see what we get. And then you can see we get essentially a representation of our object itself. So we have example one, another two. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to the Edge templating engine and how we can use it to display data coming from our Adonis controllers. In the next lesson, we'll be focusing on cleanliness Specifically, we're going to learn how we can extract out different layouts and partials from our views. And then in the following lesson after that, we'll be focusing explicitly on components.